And hello everyone, this is Elijah Ignatieff and I'm here with Yogi Shambhu. We're here to give you the inside scoop on what is happening in the 5G COVID-19 pandemic connection. Both of us have been studying diligently to find out the real goods. Now, I know Mr. Yogi Shambhu and I have very different perspectives and that's what brings the inside scoop together is having very different perspectives. And why do you start off, Mr. Shambhu, and let us know what's happened during the week, where are you feeling, what's going on with this issue? Well, as people are calming their minds slightly, uh, people seem to be now um, falling into two camps. One is, um, are the statistics that are coming out about COVID-19, are they accurate, are they inaccurate? And you see a lot of, uh, of a different type of uh, conflict that is emerging where people are trying to gather their resources and wondering, you know, who is saying what, you know, is these numbers actually based on models that are, um, are proving to be accurate? And, uh, and so we, are looking at large groups such as the CEO of YouTube has uh, just released, uh, or they were on CNN and, and claim that people who were contradicting the WHO's official stance on COVID uh, and challenging that is actually against their community guidelines and could be banned from the channel. And so that is just one of the things that's going on. You have, um, a lot of, arg of argument and heated debate around uh, Dr. It's Dr. Erickson and M Masihi, sorry for the mispronunciation, but they're two doctors that run an urgent care clinics out of California. And uh, they actually released a video, as you probably have seen uh, at this point, uh, talking about how if you extrapolate the numbers out and they have put together their own numbers based on the testing that happened within their clinics and saying that actually the spreadability of the virus is showing very high where the mortality rate is actually low and that uh, more and more thought is coming into we have a higher amount of contagion and therefore as that goes up then the mortality rate in that justification of total lockdown uh, is actually weakening now there was um from what i saw lots of people claiming well these people were just rogues they were going against everyone else's idea but uh from my research this week and looking into it a bit, I see that actually there is uh, um, more people than just them who are really questioning the, that. And I'm not saying that any of these stats are right or wrong, but I am trying to highlight the reactivity that people have around trying to quickly uh, lock down um, who is right, who is wrong, and preventing us from just having a robust conversation about this. Mm -hmm. um, w, you know, the WHO is seen as a great neutral figure, but actually, um, you know, we look at who is the, the largest funder of the WHO, and uh, we don't have to look very far uh, until we see that actually we have billionaire investors in the WHO, uh, most especially the Bill Gates and Melania Gates uh, found, uh, Foundation. And so we're just looking at softening our view to look at the true nature of these corporations, these institutions that say that they are global health. And so there's more to say about that, obviously. And um, so that's my general thrust for this week is let's have a conversation and look at the dynamics of uh, the conversation and how much people are trying to shut it down. 
what's been on your mind? There's more to say, obviously, uh, about uh, what is actually going on this week on the world stage, but just want to throw it back to you, Elijah. Well, I was involved in a, in a Facebook group discussion, and I sort of jumped in and I posted this meme, which uh, was talking about all the big stores and how many employees there were and how few of them were getting sick. And I posted it and there was, a, there was a huge kind of amount of people saying that's wrong. I'm in Walmart. There's so many people getting sick. This is ridiculous. What are you talking about? And I sort of looked at it and I thought, okay, well, maybe they're right. I mean, I'm not going to argue with them, but I looked at the main idea and that was the big fat cats, the large stores seem to be growing and they're doing well. And uh, some of these companies are, are hiring lots of people and so many small businesses and so many people uh, that, that, that are trying to stay alive and don't have a two or three month cash flow window. And so this, whatever they're doing with the lockdown is not quite in the same discussion. Like what I saw in the argument and the arguments that kind of happened afterwards, they, they, were, they were discussing the details of the pandemic. And they were sort of looking at conspiracy people theory and going, if you question there's a pandemic, you're, you're an idiot, you're a fool. And they weren't sort of looking at the larger idea that there's a design behind what is happening. There's a reason there's this lockdown. There's many things going on behind the scenes that aren't related to the pandemic, but are very affected by the pandemic. And the one thing that you and I have seen is sort of like the, the thread is this 5G network rollout and this week they, they had the uh, article of they were going to Mount Everest with the 5G rollout. They're bringing, up, they're bringing 5G to, to Mount Everest, which is basically saying we're bringing 5G everywhere and we're going to bring it to all the nice spots and we're going to have internet wherever we go. And I was, I was, it, it, it was so frustrating because there, were, there was this, again, a conversational thread with no robust discussion it was just a kind of like a name calling and sort of, you know, not, not going deeper. And I, I went in there and I was, you know, long threads saying, look at the bigger picture, look at 9-11. You know, what if this is connected to 9-11? You know, and, and, and something like that is like an idea that may be way beyond what people are thinking. And, and it's just like, there's a context, a movement, a, a, a progression over tens of years, 20 years, 30 years, where these things are occurring that are all sort of little walls on a larger prison. They're going up in different ways and we call it news and we give these things attention and then they sort of die away. But in the background, there's like the Patriot Act, the invasion of Iran, the invasion of Afghanistan. And you can't question 9-11 and go, oh, you know, and people go, well, you, you don't care about the 3,000 people that died. You don't care about, you know, you know, there's terrorism in the world. And, and, and it's, it's like there's this mentality that can't connect the dots, that, that won't believe that there's some harmful design at much higher levels that are actually creating these events and making them happen because they are using them to make other things happen. And so I'll go back to you on that one. But that was, that was the biggest thing I saw this week is, is just that the ability for humans to critically analyze at multiple levels, multiple layers, multiple perspectives on what is happening uh, seems to be a bit lacking. And I think that's what we need to add into this. It, there is a, there's an impulse for people to have, uh, have discussion on the details of a situation and things can get very micro and really working through the minutia. And I really encourage that. I think that, again, I'm wanting a robust conversation that's ongoing, that's longer than just a couple of days around uh, the, the actual statistics, the death rates, the contagion rates of this virus. But we can't let that discussion prevent us from actually spending the necessary time to look at the bigger picture. 
what is happening at the same time as this. Because this, there are things that are going to be happening that are going to prove to be a much longer fallout from this, not only economically, but um, legislatively as well. The UK just passed a, a, um, a vaccination bill saying that they can enforce vaccination. And if you do not um, accept that, they can arrest you and they can, uh, de you know, they can destroy your property. They can, um, you know, they can take you out of your home. They, they can imprison you uh, and they can force your vaccination. So, you know, this is something that is happening. And it's something that is happening all over the world. We're seeing this um, play out, the uh, reduction of our liberties. And at the same time, we have to look at what is being suppressed at the same time. Putting numbers aside, we can look at what the FBI just did where they uh, went in and raided a vitamin C manufacturer just this week because that manufacturer claimed that they didn't, they didn't claim that they could help cure COVID, but that vitamin C can help in you recovering from an illness like this, just in the recovery. And the active suppression, but actually it's not even just a suppression, it's a total omittance of other forces that can help us, that would decentralize the solution. And so I, I hear you asking for us to look at the patterns of centralization, how the, the powers that want to have power over us are trying to centralize the solution, centralize the saviors. The saviors are the vaccination camp and the, and the WHO, and all you can do is flatten the curve and there's nothing else you can do. Well, there's a lot more that we can do. That's my belief, and it's being actively suppressed. Before I, before I put it over to you, there, there is a really exciting thing that happened, and that is in Connecticut, uh, they actually, the people refused a proposed drone program where uh, the, the police department had claimed that they were going to be, um, yeah, that they were going to actually uh, have drones monitoring all the parks and making sure that people stay six feet apart. So Dragonfly, the Canadian company that is generating this technology also has it built in where they can test all of you know, your temperature, your, your heart rate, they're gathering all of this information at the same time. It freaked the people out. The people said no, and what did they do? The police rolled it back and said, well, hey, you know, this is for good reason, but we understand that people are too freaked out about this, so we will relent. And so that's an exciting thing that happened this week, is that, you know, because it's going to be, jurisdiction by jurisdiction, people saying no to these things. Mm -hmm. And as we're talking about 5G and this untested technology, it has to be from a region to region basis as well. It, you know, that's my view. What is your view when we're talking about that? I don't know, have you ever heard of the show called Colony? <clears throat> no. It's on Netflix and it's a, a show that has uh, these aliens come down on the planet and these aliens create these corrals like they have these massive walls and they create these corrals around these uh, the bigger cities and they create these colonies and the humans are then harvested to go in the work camp on a moon where they're building some sort of secret weapon to defend these aliens from another alien race that's coming and these aliens have such a higher tech 
we have a good chance. They sort of wiped us out in the first 12 hours of being here. And there's a lockdown. And what I saw in, in Colony is kind of a, a potential worst case scenario for where we may go, where we're actually not allowed to leave the city. And, you know, they did that in Wuhan, they do that in different places where all of a sudden they, they shut it down, nobody can move. And then life is very different, right? And then they have a very strong police force. Uh, it's, they have a, a curfew at night. Uh, it's very scary. And they basically take people, if you're in the resistance, they take you and, and you're gone. And there's no do, do, do law. And there's a group of people, humans, that are the managers in between the alien race and the humans. And they were picked through a, law, all, a special algorithm beforehand to find out who would be the best people to be in power over the humans. And these humans are, they live beautifully, they have a great house, they have everything they need, but they're the ones that are kind of the guards and the managers, the special police forces for the humans to keep them in line, just to make sure that, they, that the quotas are made and the quotas are certain types of, you know, whatever it is, materials or humans or whatever, whatever they need, they have, they have to get the quotas. If they get the quotas, they're left alone. And then the colonies run themselves, and the humans are policing themselves. And, you know, if, if you look into the future, and again, you look at worst case scenarios, where in the background, what I've heard too, is there's a food crisis, there's, there's mounds of potatoes, there's, there's lo the logistics of movement have been changed. And the you know, humans at their base foundation beings that move around and they move things, right? Movement is a huge part of who we are. And when you stop movement, just like in the body, you know, things don't thrive. There has to be a flow. There has to be a movement between the parts. And so they're changing, they're stopping everything because they want to bring something else in. It's going to get so bad. There's so many unemployment, like I thought 30 million Americans went unemployed. And then I had I had heard somewhere that 50 million Americans were going to become unemployed because of automation and, and robotization. You know, that was coming anyway. And that was over years. And now there's like 30 million and growing. I don't know how, you know, the total number of, of Americans that are unemployed. And, you know, people can recover from getting sick. And most seem to be getting recovered. But economies have a very hard time recovering from a crash. And like the financial system is, is a house of cards based upon, you know, derivative markets and, 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 and banking systems that are about to fall apart because they're, they're built on nothing. You know, there's just so much garbage in the financial system right now. And, and it's, you know, they, that's about to fall or was crashing. And again, this, this pandemic comes in. And it shuts down all the riots in Hong Kong. It shuts down all the riots in France. It shuts down all the roadblocks in Canada. The humans were just about to rise. We had enough. The whole world could have been just about to ignite. And then boom, the pandemic happens. And at the same time in the background, there's the 5G rollout, which will basically create this electromagnetic field like a microwave oven around the world. And then transmitters every 400 feet. And then satellites in the sky. And then complete surveillance on all of us, you know, to, to a much higher degree where, as you said, there could be drones around. And there were drones in this show, Colony. If anything went wrong, dr drones showed up and they were armed and they were deadly. And so if you're looking at the, the largest control mechanism, which is 5G network connected to drones and uh, the food supply is down and you can't move and now humans are like animals in a corral and we're not there yet but when people are, are, are arguing over if there's a covid or not or how long it's all of the details of what the covid is fine there's a covid but are the measures they are using to keep the humans where they are are they valid are they relevant are they truthful and i, I think that's what uh we have to dive deeper into. Mm. And are they necessary? 
what gives you the most effect and and we're talking about sweden and we're, and there's a lot of criticism what i find interesting is we're talking about the cult of of the community mindset how people are thinking about the situation and if they actually have um if people are allowing dissonant thought if or if we're trying to have everyone agree we want everyone to agree on this and if you don't agree you're not responsible so again you have people in fighting and and you have a situation where people are really pitted against each other because everything is very panicked well and that's a perfect distraction from all the other things that are happening, our food system is literally breaking down. Our food chain is breaking down. You have Tyson putting out a full page ad in the New York Times saying, get ready, our food system is breaking down. And you don't have people saying, okay, now, our food system has been broken for a very long time. We are slowly killing ourselves, trying to feed ourselves this way we have sold you down the river with convenience you have to take back the responsibility of of procuring your foods in a local way again if if these big powers were actually interested in long-term solutions they would be trying to embolden local action every action that they are suggesting throws it to these big players on the international stage and really robs the individuals, in fact, frames the individuals as these hapless victims that cannot help themselves. And um, it's a, the fact that 5G is rolling out with no human studies, long-term human studies, is, it is just a, a major blow uh, to the credibility of our governments. You know, we know that governments work in um, with a conflict of interest. You know, you just have to look at Canada. We used to own a patent on GMO soya. And at the same time, we were in charge of regulating the health of that. And when they were called out, they had to divest from that. But they started out in this way, and they were fine with that. It was, it, it took advocates saying, you know, you guys are in conflict of interest. You can't do this. And so the same as this, you have the WHO saying, this is the only solution we have to vaccinate every single person. And then you have your major contributor being the person that's actually trying and will benefit from that. That's a conflict of interest. And so people have to start to, to again, step back. And instead of being so glued to the screen, so glued to, you know, well, this person said that and that person said this and go, okay, you know what? Maybe we don't fully know, but let's back up and try to look at the, co the context of the situation. Things are happening on the global stage. Look at Russia is withholding wheat supplies right now. You know, you have, you know, Belgium, France, Germany, all closing their borders to one another. You have, you know, people are getting very, very uh, tense on the world stage. You have U.S. and China ratcheting up their, you know, their fight and, yeah, the connection with the WHO in China, what's happening there, how China is saying, you know, they, they are ba basically banning the WHO from uh, talking about certain things, talking about Taiwan at all. The WHO cannot mention Taiwan. Why? Because China wants Taiwan. So you have all of these power plays that are going on. And we are arguing about, you know, if or if not these, you know, these stats are, we all know that we're going to open back up again. We all know that eventually we have to 
open the countries up again, but we have no exit strategy that is very effective. And, and that's why I keep looking at Sweden going, okay, so yeah, so they, they have a bit more mortality rate, but they're already dealing with a moderate approach. They have some social distancing. It's not like they're all out, you know, hugging each other in the streets, but they have put the power back in the people and saying, you guys are adults. Let's try to sort this out. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that that's super important here. Um, what is going on with you? What is the biggest things that are happening right now that people have to be, is there some pressure, is there some suppression of information that's happening uh, or a massive distraction? And what are we being distracted from right now? Hmm. I think, I think we're being distracted from actually taking the initiative to build our own system. If you're always reacting to, let's say, the, the deceptions and the plans and attacks of an oppressive system, you're always on the defense and, you, and, and you're basically being led down a pathway because there's this massive infrastructure and we're all individuals. And we may be billions and they're hundreds of thousands but they control the infrastructure. So we're just kind of like the masses, the herd that doesn't matter what we say, we can talk all we want, but we don't have any power. And that's because of like, like uh, Morpheus said, you're within this matrix with certain rules and these rules keep us as slaves. And so if we're not working actively on building a new economic system, that is based upon universal principles and takes usury out, takes changes the national uh, banking system away out of private hands. The Federal Reserve is, is a private organization policing the American people, posing as a, a federal institution and dictating the currency of a country. And if you wanna know how to control a country, all you have to do is control its currency. I think uh, one of the Rothschilds said that. And so the, the groups behind the closed doors, the ones that manufacture the wars, the ones that put together the false flags, the ones that actually have a design that they, they want to occur to you know, solidate the power that they have. You know, these are the ones that own the media. And if you don't take them into account if you don't allow for their design it doesn't matter how you argue you're always going to lose because you're just kind of like people who are always at the effect you're always at the symptoms you never get to the cause and you never get to your own power and so what i see right now happening is all across the planet there's people like us who are like intelligent resourced uh, know what's happening and I've seen these things happen over and over again. And now our time to unite is happening in small little groups in Zoom. There was this unconference that I was speaking at just a, a couple days ago. And there was 168 speakers. They're all in Zoom. And people, like I had about eight people in the room and I gave a little thing on conscious value systems. And I saw it, it's just like the people, like there's this media it's one way that's a transmission of this narrative that is, is linked to this scam and gets everyone all hyped and conflict and talking. And then there's the new type of media like this with me and you who maybe 10 people see this, maybe 100, maybe just the people that know us. But then the people that know us, our circle of influence, all of a sudden get a different download about what is going on. And they may agree with us and they may pass it on or, or not. But we're using this media to influence our people to see the world differently and to be our own media, to be our own information source, to be the ones that we trust. And that is very important if you're gonna build a new system because the media is the feedback mechanism, the media is the information system. And 
if you're always in their narrative, if you're always in their story, if you're always reacting again to whatever they're doing, you know, if it's deception and lies, all it does is it, it breaks apart whatever you're trying to do. But if you're building a new system and you're using your own media to gather the people, to understand the larger situation, and then to, to, to create and build what I call a shared knowledge community or a new paradigm infrastructure, you know, now you're using your energy towards something that in the future that is going to be good for you. And if we're just sitting at home and, and we're always reacting again to this mainstream media and whether we agree or not, uh, it isn't going to help us go forward. And so, you know, the ones that have the solutions and the ones that want to build a new economic system and the ones that uh, are tired of the lying, they're going to be very different in the mindset than the people who are just going to go along with this. And at some point, it's those people that will be the leaders that build the new economic system. And then the others will come inside. But we have to do it first amongst ourselves in a manner that actually works at the community level. And so, you know, again, like the, uh, if we don't continually broaden our perspective and understand the big picture and then relate it to our life where we are now, I think we're going to get caught in the traps that are being set for us. Mm. That I agree with entirely about the centralized power. If we put our focus on what they're saying, we really are, are losing the opportunity. And in fact, we're falling into the trap of centralization and, uh, and that has never really fared well. Um, the, and we just have to look at how, for example, the WHO, as we're saying, is so linked to China. And uh, even so much so that they are, um, when China came out and said, you know, the, uh, there is no proof, this is back in January, there is no proof that uh, this spreads uh, from person to person. The WHO just came out and flatly said it. So they were flatly uh, just um, spouting Chinese propaganda without actually taking a critical view of it instead of saying, okay, we are independent here from the, this huge power. And so that's a good example, I think, of, of how uh, people are looking to the next authority and uh, having them take the lead. And, and I think you're right. We have a, a situation where you have all of these, the biggest corporations are still forcing their workers to work. And, um, and then all the local businesses, I mean, I live in Victoria and, and the majority of small businesses are closed right now where they could more easily control the numbers of people within their stores and yet nope they are just not allowed these people are will a lot of them will never recover and you have to wonder who is benefiting from small businesses never recovering who is benefiting from a passport that is contingent on immunization you know when we haven't found a solid uh you know a um a immunization uh, for um, COVID, sorry, for SARS or MRSA, you know, all of these things, we are waiting for a solution that may uh, never come and may never come effectively. But that's all that they got because they refuse to look at the power of the people. They refuse to look at, you know, Tra traditional medicine why because it takes away the power from you know from the people that want to give us you know they they, they basically want to be our parents you know and uh and i'm i'm happy that a lot of people aren't um 
fully believing them. And I think that that's what's happening this week is that you have people who are starting to say, you know what, I, this isn't, this isn't really panning out in my own mind here. Um, and so the dissidents are breaking off from the herd, but now we'll see how much shaming of dissident information is going to play out over the next month. Uh, and really all of it is coming down to when are we going to open up? And if actually, you know, people are going to let this happen in a way uh, that doesn't sink the entire ship because it could sink the entire ship, not just e economically. I mean, you have how many workers who are day workers in India, Africa, Mexico, all, all of these people have to work. And so either they starve or they risk infection. And so, you know, you have these people who are, are trying to make these tough, tough uh, decisions. And in part, because we rely on slaves, enslaved people to, to uh, do our dirty work for us. We don't want to get our hands dirty and actually plant our food anymore. You know, so it's, uh, it, it really is a situation where we have to, grow up or not we have to choose to actually be individuals now there's a big threat here how is the police state going to actually respond to us and how is all this going to play out in real time i think we have uh yeah we are yet to know yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you mr yogi shambu i think we're coming to the end of this episode yeah I would just like to finish by saying something to everyone and to, you know, no matter what, we all have a lot more time right now and we have time to reflect and we have time to question, do research and to figure out what you want to do for the future. And I think if you start to map out your future, get really focused on your goals, get really focused on designing what you want to occur outside of their deviousness what would you do if you could actually control your future and you took away all the blocks either financially or mentally or emotionally uh, that might be there and each week mr yogi shambu and i are, are are going down a journey and we're focusing on this pandemic and the 5g rollout but we're seeing that as a thread that they don't want people to follow they are bringing down videos on the YouTube and Facebook that stuff that don't agree to the narrative. And if anything is linking 5G to the pandemic, there's this big, 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 that can't be possible. And yet the last two huge pandemics that occurred were very linked to the timing of a new technology, either radio or a radar coming out. And this is something to take into account when you're looking at 5G and the pandemic that is occurring. And so this is Captain Sweet and Mr. Yogi Shambu, and we will be back next week. And if you've watched this long, much thanks for, for delving in and uh, send us messages. We're very interested in your feedback. Mm -hmm. See you and uh, stay independent and relaxed as much as you can. And we'll see you next week. Thank you, Captain Sweet.